Now we're going to talk with Dr. Joseph Michelli. He's the author of Humor, Play, and Laughter, Stress-Proofing Life with Your Kids. And Dr. Michelli, thanks for being with us this morning. Well, thanks for having me, Steve. I this appreciate is, it. This is really a time of year we all need to read this book because some of us have a very high stress level with our kids being home for the summer or taking them on vacation, right? Well, actually, I am on a book tour in a hotel that is definitely a vacation haven. And uh, I've observed some incredibly wonderful behavior and some incredibly devastating yeah. behavior on the part of parents. Well, you know, I used to work at Disney World, and I just could not believe how bad parents were in terms of dealing with the stress that comes with being tired and hot and dragging the kids around all day, and they'd scream and swear at the kids and do all sorts of bad things. So what are your tips for, for dealing with this stress? You know, one of the first things to, to start with is the whole notion that we have to have these huge peak experiences in the lives of kids to play with them. And if we can figure out how to play on a more consistent, regular, day-to-day -day basis, then we really don't put ourselves in a position where we have to have fun on a two-week vacation each year. But don't some people take play too seriously these days? And we have such organized play. They think we got to go to soccer or tennis or something. You're saying just to have goofy play, like sing silly songs in the car. You know, and I think the kids really do have a greater sense of whether we are playful or not, not so much whether we play in some organized sense with them or, or structure their play, but are we playful parents or not? And I think you can, you can look at yourself in the mirror and answer that question pretty easily. And if you're not, then certainly my book is intended to help you figure out ways to, to lighten up and realize the importance of it in so raising what, a healthy child. In what ways are you playful with your kids? In, in every way I possibly can. Um, you know, every moment and every opportunity that I have to interact with them, I'm looking at, is there a way I can do it in a manner that, that softens me up a little bit as I relate to them? And it, it's interesting because by doing that type of thing, and my favorite thing is things like run, ring and run baskets where we, we literally you know pack a basket full of all kinds of playful things and bring it to some family we know is humor impaired. And uh, you know we leave it on their doorstep and we all run back to the car. It's very sophomoric, and many parents who li listen to this think, well, you know, this is pretty twisted advice. But in point of fact, I hope my child remembers that as much as they remember me raging at them about something yeah. really trivial when I didn't have my perspective. Now, what kind of stuff do you put in the basket? Well, you know, pretty much anything. We like to create stuff, you know, and the more that we can actively just do in, in the making of, of goofy stuff, the better. But sometimes we'll, you know, we'll take cartoons out of the newspaper yeah. and white out the captions and write our own captions and put that kind of stuff in the basket. Well, isn't that clever? I like that idea. Kind of, you're kind of phantom, you know, you're kind of sneaking up and putting the basket there, ringing the doorbell and running. And running, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's really, it's got all the wonder for children because they have that anticipa anticipation that they're doing something wrong, sort of, and, and the thrill of getting caught. But in, in point of fact, they know that they're doing something very positive. For Does children. anybody ever get you back for it? Oh, yeah. We, we have a, you know, we have a, a reign of retaliation in our neighborhood. As well. <laughs> and we're pretty much the suspect in all cases. I bet. <laughs> uh, the book is called Humor, Play, and Laughter. How do you define humor? What does it mean? Well, first off, what it, what it means is that no one can define it. <laughs> Let's start yeah. there. But, but what I do think is a simple way of looking at it is incongruity. Anything that doesn't go together normally can be looked at humorously or in, in abject frustration. And in, in, you know, in parenting, there's all these things that don't quite fit the way that I would like them to fit if I were the king of the universe of my household. Uh, the children certainly sent, seem, seem to be the center of the universe, so I'm constantly finding things happening in my house that are just out of my control. Mm -hmm. And in that moment of incongruity, I really have the opportunity to be amused by it or to be saddened by it or aggravated by it. So now, I think you say in the book the word humor means fluid or flowing. Right. It comes from the, from the, uh, of the Latin uh, to humor, meaning to be fluid or flowing. And what does that mean? How do we how do we adapt that? Well, I think that's the key, you know, is that so many things in life happen that are unexpected, and are we fluid and flowing in response to it, or are we rigid? You know, we know that, that trees are, can withstand incredible force winds if they're supple enough. And, right. and the truth is, you know, can we handle adversity uh, in the same way, or do we tend to break under the pressure? And so, for me, it's, it's just trying to become less reactive in, in an intense sense, and and kind of flow with the initial blow of it, trying to find something funny about it, and then react, hopefully, in a more constructive way. Yeah, but there are certain types of humor that are not appropriate, though. I mean, for instance, what do you think about put-downs or sarcasm? Well, I think this is why many parents get burned out on humor. They watch the you know kids do it to each other <laughs> in such a destructive way. Right. And so it really is our job to help them use this tool, which is humor, in a constructive manner. Uh, because used inappropriately, like all of us felt it during our adolescence, it can be very devastating. And so, you know, it is important, and the book does have a whole section on looking at constructive versus destructive humor. You actually have a good humor test. You ask questions for the good humor test. You say, am I the brunt of this joke, or am I making someone else the brunt of it? Uh, if someone else heard this joke about her, would she laugh? 
Wow, I really did that, Steve. Thanks. You wrote it, yeah. My my book's even better than I thought it was. I appreciate that. (laughs) Or would I laugh if I knew somebody was telling this joke about me? Or how would I feel if this joke was done to me? So it's essentially treat others the way you want to be treated. Now, the problem is... I like a good sarcastic joke. I like teasing in particular. At least right. I like I like to tease, uh, and I don't think I mind teasing done to me too much about certain things. <laughs> right, sure. But you're essentially saying if, if you're if you're not going to take it, don't dish it out. Well, you know, I think that's I think it's safer to teach you know that the things like sarcasm and and that are are dangerous types of humor, and it really needs to be safely done with people who you have a consensual agreement to do it with. Right. Because you could hurt feelings of some people if they don't understand your sense of humor. And even if you start with it and it's going okay, it's it's like wrestling. It can get to a point where it can get yeah. ugly. So you have to know when to stop. And you, yeah. you need to know that if you're going to engage in that type of humor, when the other person says foul, that's the point at which you absolutely have to right. pull yourself off of the humor. And, right. But that's all social skill. And I think parents can teach kids how to use those skills. And if we do, I think we get what Charles Schultz said. You know, the greatest gift to the next generation is the ability to laugh at themselves. Mm-hmm. And if we don't teach them that, then what is their op- options when they're faced with adversity? If Our, we don't model that for them, I fear that they may come to the conclusion that Uzi is the solution to all of life's problems. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Nickelodeon gag splat or something like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Dr. Joseph Michelli is the guest. The book is Humor, Play, and Laughter. What's the silliness quotient? You think you know your IQ. What about your SQ, your silliness quotient, as we continue on News Radio 1040 WHO? And Dr. Michelli, in the book, you talk about. Your silliness quotient, kind of like your IQ, it's your SQ. How can we can figure out? How can we figure out that is our silliness quotient? Well, you know, I, I just made that up as kind of a vehicle to remind <laughs> parents that they. they That's okay. You can make stuff up. That's fine. You know, at this point, you know, I should patent it though, because enough people have asked me about the right. question. It's one of those things that I just kind of fumbled through. But you know, in essence, what what the quotient factors on is the notion that often we are so adultified in the way we respond to our kids, and so. If you really want to have a good silliness question, what you need to do is be able to connect with your kids on your kid's level. And so if you want to score high and have a good, uh, you know, SQ, if you will, uh, you need to be able to play with your kids on their level. So act to your kid's age. Yeah, when you're playing, I mean, I think you still have to retain the role of parent and guide them and teach them and all of that. Right. But, you know, there are too many parents who basically are bringing their kids up to their level and trying to get their kids to play right. in the competitive or aggressive levels that adults tend to play. Now in the book, you essentially say you take your actual age. Yeah. You take how old you act while you're playing with your child. That's right. You subtract your play age from your actual age and multiply it by 10. Right. So let's say I'm 43. Mm -hmm. How old do I act when I play with my kids? Oh, probably about 10. That's good. So so, so that makes me 33 because I subtract it, right? Right, 33. So I have a 330 silliness quotient. You're you're an extra genius genius there. You know, if you figure 100 (laughs) is normal, you're, you're off the deep end, basically. Now, the problem is some of us that are silly with our kids also want to be silly the rest of the day, like in business meetings or, you know, at serious times like church. <laughs> Shouldn't we have certain times when we're silly and other times when we're serious? Well, I think, you know, definitely context is an important part of using humor. And I talk about things like having rapport as an important component of humor, also knowing what environment you're in and what the purpose of the environment is. But I'll tell you, silliness it comes from the, the word comes from the old English salig, which means to be happy and blessed. So hmm. silliness is a blessing for most of us most days. When people act silly, it really does relieve our tension and it breaks our set from our otherwise you know burnt out yeah. approach to life. So you know, I find people being silly occasionally. You know, again, occasionally is a key word in the context of my business day as something that's truly delightful. It's an incredible yeah. gift. Well, it's good for you to remind us of that because many of us, as we grow up, we think we've got to be more serious because we're in the working world, and even as parents, we think we've got to be super serious to be strict. But you're saying add a little bit of silliness in your life, humor, play, and laughter, and that'll actually help with some of the discipline of the kids, and it'll just make your summer go a lot better. The book is called Humor, Play, and Laughter, Stress-Proofing Life with Your Kids. The author is Dr. Joseph Michelli. Thanks for being with us.